Hey, what's up, guys? This is the Maximus, and welcome to the second episode of our ongoing tutorial series on how to do everything in EDM on FL Studio. In the last video, we talked about how to EQ your elements in your tracks properly, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Fruity Reverb 2 and Sidechain Reverb. Uh, before that, I'm going to take out some queries that uh, you guys have put on in the email about how is it is this necessary that you need to EQ that thing in that way only. My answer would be like no, because it de particularly depends on the producer that uh, who's making the track. For that person, uh, the frequencies may sound good, may not sound good, and that's how he will EQ that thing. But yes, some guidelines like your bass should not have the uh, mid and the high is the uh, since you should not have the low part, that will go on, that will have to be there. So that's some guidelines which you, you should follow to in order to get a good EQ. And that's pretty much uh, that differs in the EQ part. And uh, some guys or one of them had written on the YouTube comments that uh, if you have a kick and the drop having six layers, chords having four or three layers and the bass having three layers, so you won't hear the kick. Uh, my answer would be like, you will definitely hear that kick because there's not only the EQ going on in your track. There's a lot more than the EQ. You just use the compressor, you use the reverb, you use the side chain, you use uh, the sh stereo shaper, you use the like loads of things that you can use the, to make the track really fit in, the lower part really fit in. Even my low ends are not really good right now. They, need, they are in the process of make, being a good low end. So that basically depends on the acoustic environment that you are in the sound system you have because my sound system is like really pathetic. That's why I can't get the low end and I have to ask for a mastering engineer for doing that purpose. So yes, uh, now I'm talking about this uh, uh, reverb and I have used the, the drop part from the remix that we did for Weston for the track called Siren. The vocals by Pia Toscano. If you guys haven't checked that uh, track, uh, we will leave the link in the description. This track was released uh, uh, this, this Friday on YouTube. Uh, the drop part is basically like having the drop and the chorus and the bass line. And uh, I had to remove some of the drums because uh, the CPU usage was going par 95%. So I have just rendered the remix uh, drop and uh, let me show you how it sounds right now. This is what this was our drop part and now I'm going to talk about Fruity Reverb 2 and how to use the reverb in your drops and why you use reverb. So reverb is basically used to provide that uh, big atmospheric feeling, the provide a depth in your sounds to make the sounds more kind of a, more on the side of the humanish sound so that it feels like really organic. And for that purpose, we usually prefer having the reverb on our sounds. And uh, Reverb 2 has got different kinds of knobs and levelers here. As you can see, this is the high cut and the low cut. They basically cuts off the frequencies that you don't want. The high cut will be like a low pass and the low cut will be a high pass. The delay is basically like uh, I, if I let you use this one in my synth, this is the synth and I add a reverb here it will be like uh, if I increase the delay part the reverb will come after that amount after that amount of 
seconds that I have increased the delay for. For example, in this case, I have my delay at about one second. So my reverb will come into play after one second. As you can listen here. So this is the delay part that uh, which is present in reverb. This is the size and this is the diffusion. The size is basically how much area you want the reverb to be present in because if you keep it uh, hollow it will sound something like this too much in front of your yourself and if you keep it the size widen up the sounds will also widen up You might not uh, feel the difference because the sounds are really processed differently and maybe uh, the reverb on this part is overcoming the reverb on this part. And uh, this is the diffusion. This is diffusion is basically how much sides you have in your, after how much, in how many sides the reverb will go on and reflect back. If I have my uh, the diffusion in like a rectangle or a triangle shape the sound will reflect back really at that part and if I remove this let me like part in a better way in the snare the snare I have a reverb going on and if I just increase the diffusion and decrease the diffusion and the number of sides decreases it will sound like this reflects back really quickly so that's how the diffusion part works in the bass part you can add or remove the bass part if you require in your sound That's how the bass part works. The more you have the bass, the, the knob on the most, most more of the right hand side, the more the bass it will have. And this is the decay part. It's like till how many seconds the reverb will be there on the, on the sample, on the sound. So since I have my decay at about 20 seconds, so the reverb will go off after 20 seconds. This is Crossover, this is the damping, and basically, crossover and damping are nothing but a uh, low cut and the high cut. They work pretty much like the low cut and the high cut. And uh, now, talking about this uh, slider part, this is the dry part. For example, if I have a snare, the sample that originally I have will be in this dry part without the wet part. That's the snare I have originally. And if I increase the wet, this wet part has the reverb part in it. So this is my wet and the dry part. You need to mix the dry and the wet part really well so that uh, the reverb really comes off nicely. This is the ER ratio. Mm, nothing much about uh, it will be told in this part because I barely use this thing here. I never have used what the hell is that is. And this is the studio separation of the reverb. If you want this reverb on the reverb on the mono side, you can just make it to the left or the right. The reverb will, as you can see, will be on the mono part or on the studio part. So that's how the fruity reverb works. Now I'm going to show you the side chain reverb that uh, most of the EDM tracks have right now. Side chain reverb is basically you put a controller or a compressor on the reverb part that controls or 
uh, manipulates the reverb so that when the note hits, the reverb is less, and when the note goes off, the reverb increases. That's a basic simple definition of the sidechain reverb. And for that purpose, you can you the one way that I have learned is that you can use a carrier uh, signal. For the carrier signal, I'm using a super saw. You can use anything, but just remember one thing: the settings of the carrier signal must be same as that of the synth that you have used in the original drop. So, and then what you need to do is uh, add the uh, drop melody onto this uh, carrier signal, which is a super saw in this case, and then route this uh, super saw to a mixer channel as I have done in this part. And then what you can do is add a peak controller on here and make sure that you mute the peak controller output because otherwise it will be included in the drop part. It will, it will, it will, be, it will be hearable in the uh, drop sound. And uh, the next thing is like, usually I make a bus for my drop sense because uh, the main part I do in the original sounds is like remove the initial reverb and delay from the sounds and then EQ them the different ways and then make a bus of, out of them and then add all the effects that I need to add. And so in this case you have the reverb going on and we need to sidechain this reverb so what will we what we will do is that we will go to the peak controller and mute this one and after that we go to the reverb and then uh, right click this uh, wet dry knob and and take this link to controller and then you can see that what kind of controller you want so i want the peak controller peak peak to peak controller basically i don't want the lfo for that the purpose the low frequencies will also be coming in so I just want the peak to peak controller and I just invert this what kind of uh, 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 scale do you want you want to be an, an inverted scale you want to make it a steppy how how do I, how going to, what kind of wave do you want that's what this uh, uh, linear or the inverted part tells you so I have just used the inverted part and I accept this and let me hear the drop now. As you can see, I have increased this part. Uh, in, you have to play around with the tension and the decay and the volume so that you just have the peak going on and the max at the maximum value. Uh, you can also play with the sh phase shift that will make your track really, really unique at the at some kind of point and then you can just see in your reverb that as my initial note hits the reverb goes half of the value of the red knob and as my reverb as my note ends the reverb comes in so that's how you side chain That's how you side chain your reverb and yes you can use it in very different techniques in your drops and your breakdowns to provide that environment also you can uh, you can make the automation of decay function so that you get that break and that atmospheric break in your breakdown the way w and w and headhunters do in your in their breakdowns so yeah, so that's pretty much in this video. Hope you guys have liked this video and enjoyed this. Uh, if you have guys, if you guys have any query about anything that we have told you till now in the EQ and the reverb part, do let us know in the comments or in the or mail us at the maximus read idioms at the red gmail .com. We will be kind to clarify all the doubts that you have regarding the EQ and the reverb. And if you guys uh, like this video, do share with your producer friends and do subscribe to our channel and we will be coming soon with lots of new tracks and different kind of tutorials also. 
and the FLPs too. And uh, one more thing that uh, our new big room sample pack will be launched soon uh, by, on the Talent Stage Nation. Do check that out. And uh, yes, that's pretty much in this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thank you.